from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering OCP US Summit 2016. Brought to you by OCP. Now your host, Jeff Frick and Stu Miniman. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here at the Cube. We are live in uh, San Jose, California, the San Jose Convention Center at Open Compute Project Summit. 2016, it's our third year bringing theCUBE here. This is where the cloud lives. This is the infrastructure, this is the hardware, this is what's powering the data centers, and it's a lot of excitement. If you like geeky stuff and you want to touch it, unlike software, this is the place to be. People walking around with cards, and there's boxes, and servers, and all kinds of fun stuff. We're really excited to be joined by our next guest, J.R. Rivers from Cumulus Networks. We, we saw you here, actually, uh, two years ago, right, I was looking, yeah. we've seen you a couple times since then, but yeah. you were here two years ago, right. and it was still number five, even though it's on right, yeah. <laughs> So, give us your perspective. You've been in the Valley a long time, right. you've been with a lot of great players. What's your kind of take on what's going on here this week? Well, I, when you look at Open Computer and how, how it's evolved, right, it started off in, in kind of the, the warehouse areas of Facebook, a small invite only event, not that many people. Um, I think they were trying to figure out what it all meant, a little bit of recruiting, a little bit of enablement, a little bit of supply chain management, and it's evolved itself to a point where customers are, are really trying to get their heads wrapped around what does it mean to have a supply chain that looks kind of like a, a big player, right? They know that a Google or a Facebook has kind of this ODM direct relationship with their suppliers, and they want to know what does that look like? And they've been looking over and over again, like you said, years and years they've been coming to these open compute summits saying, what is this about? So on the floor you see suppliers, that are, you know, there are people like Mellanox, like chips and systems, uh, uh, you know, uh, Finisar, something like selling optics, optical cables and, or, and modules, and they're saying, hey, this is what everybody's building mega scale data centers out of, you can buy this from us directly. And so it's, it's pretty cool to watch customers really latching onto it, recognizing that, hey, this is in the realm of possibility. I've heard the same thing four or five years in a row. And what's, what's been interesting to us is over the, this past year, we've had a, a numerous customers that have said, we're building a new data center and it's all open compute technology. Pretty cool. Wow, that, 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 that's amazing. So JR, you know, we, we used to see there, there was a huge chasm between what the hyperscale guys were doing in the enterprise. Uh, I mean, I think you, you know, you're one of those guys that helped build a massive you know, infrastructure, and the typical enterprise doesn't have JR and a team of PhDs uh, to help architect this. Um, so, you know, does, open, does OCP help bridge that gap? You know, help, help us kind of square that circle of, you know, the infrastructure has to change, but the applications aren't the same, the operational model's very different. Um, you know, so, you know, is, is this still for like the big 20 guys, or you know, how far down market does it come, and how does that operations change? Yeah, I mean, we're lucky to see it on the customer side, and it, it goes all the way down market. I mean, we have little tiny operations, like a library here, or a school district there, um, that are able to leverage OCP technologies, OCP switches, OCP servers, um, so it doesn't really stop at any size or scale. I think the big difference is the, the enterprises had been taught by their suppliers for a really long time that all this stuff was really hard. There's a lot of black magic in there. Don't worry, trust me, I know how it works. <laughs> and by coming to a show like Open Compute Summit, they're recognizing, hey, there's really not that much black magic in here and it's not that hard to put together. And I'm being told by numerous people and shown example after example that it's not that hard and they're just becoming more comfortable. Yeah, so network has been a big focus of uh, the, the news and the keynotes this morning. Uh, this morning in the keynote, they kind of walked through the stack and talked about the, you know, the disaggregation of hardware and software, which Cumulus is heavily involved in, and then kind of you know, moving up the stack. Where do you see things, you know, where's the ecosystem, the partnerships, where do you play, where do you partner, where don't you partner? Right, yeah, so for us at Cumulus, we're all about software, right? Whether it's kind of a box level OS that helps you, you know, run routing protocols and make the box do things, or management layer software that wraps around those boxes and allows them to do interesting things in customers' networks. So that's kind of our world. We partner really well with people that make great hardware, um, whether it's a company like Mellanox with a, you know, the Spectrum ASIC and, and some of their optical modules and cables as they're moving forward. Uh, someone like a, a Dell or a, an Acton Edge Core or a Qantas Systems. You know, people that allow customers access to high capacity hardware, whether it's compute or storage or networking, those are our natural partners. Um, on the software side, we partner with a lot of ecosystem people. You know, we have a, 
a great relationship. Actually, I don't want to name too many people, but anyways, we have a great relationship with a lot of software partners as well because we're less about what code we write and more about what we can pull together as solutions to allow our customers to benefit. Yeah, so JR, uh, a couple of you know, big announcements from some big players here. So Microsoft's been involved in OCP for a little while, but you know, Google uh, is participating. You yeah. know, what's your take on that? You know, what's real? You know, why, what's the motivation for them to being here? You know, do you think Amazon's going to show up next year? Right. Um, slightly surprised that Google showed up, to be blunt. Um, you know, they develop a ton of technology. They, they have, they consume so much of it, they don't really need to expand the ecosystem around that. They get great supply chain by themselves. Um, you know, maybe a little bit, bit of it is get them giving back. Not a traditional googly thing to do. A lot of times they keep technology to themselves. So, you know, I wish I could tell you more on what their motivations are, but I would love to drink beers with somebody to figure that out. Oh. Um, you know, the, the Microsoft, uh, you know, cloud, you know, suite, what do they call it, Sonic or whatever? Sonic, yeah. You know, Generally pretty cool, um, and great indicator that yet another web presence says to someone like Cisco, hey, your software's not that interesting to us. Um, in a super really weird way, it's a great validation of what we're doing at Cumulus because it looks a lot like Cumulus Linux. They copied a ton of stuff from us, we've met with them. You know, if you break it down, it's a lot of our components. Their GitHub repository contains a bunch of source code that's got our copyright on it. Um, so it's a huge validation of what we've done, that they've seen that so useful that they're using it in their production data sets. They're not a customer, as you can tell, <laughs> um, but the, you know, they're leveraging the technology. I wonder if it has something with Google to, in kind of support of their, um, um, the cloud project, right? Be, to be more in kind of the world of the enterprise suppliers, and maybe it's has something to do with that. Uh, you know, their event's coming up, we covered right. their cloud launch a couple years ago. I don't know, just speculating. I think it's a fair speculation, but I would argue that it's probably more PR than technology, if you get what I'm saying, right? I mean, if you look at something coming like Google and what it's going to mean for them to be in enterprise and in cloud, it's going to be less about, hey, I can give you a VM at the lowest cost, or I can give you a container for almost free, and more about, I've got this really great enterprise class application that will solve a meaningful business problem for you. Right. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the other piece, uh, Brian Gracely, uh, our, our cloud guy at Wikibon always said, uh, the guys that you see at the keynotes at every single show, that means they're recruiting. Right. Uh, yeah. So you know, it, it's all, uh, you know, there's a limited pool of talent, uh, they're all going after yeah. uh, the, these various pieces. Um, let me ask you, JR, your customers, you know, how much, you know, how much is open source something that they're like, it must be open source, um, or you know, do they want to participate? You know, what is that dynamic of you know, open source and, and what, what you're seeing from the customer base? Yeah, that's, obviously there's a spectrum like with anything else like yeah. that. Um, what we're seeing increasingly is, it's kind of a little bit less about open source and more about um, the ability to be flexible and move around, supply chain control, um, ability to influence the outcome. So uh, some people are like super religious. I, I want to have open source because it affords me all of those things we just talked about. Um, some of it's more of, I just want to know that what's under the covers can be replaced, worked on, enhanced outside of whoever I'm working with. I, I don't like that world where someone like you know, a Cisco's wrapped me all the way up and, and I don't have any degrees of freedom to move. Yeah, uh, it was interesting. I was watching uh, one, of, one of the keynote presentations. They were talking about, you know, just the super high bandwidth, uh, you know, that, that, that's coming in the future. Yeah. Uh, and they said that, you know, we might even get, be getting away from connectors. Uh, you know, it's just going to be built onto the board. I, I know it's something you and I've talked about many times right. in, in the past. Um, you know, just cabling and optics is kind of this dark art that, like, most people don't talk about, but it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Right. Um, do, do you see that changing? Um, the the, like the physical mechanics, I, I see yeah. it changing, but I mean, just let me flip it around on you. Like, yeah. when you look at the 100 gig technology that's going to start, is coming out this year, I mean, you're looking at 100 gig switches that are going to cost customers like 10 grand. 32 wow. by 100 for 10 grand. <laughs> just kind of use your brain and roll back. How long ago was that the, the bandwidth capacity of like a half a million dollar chassis? Right. Right? About five years ago. How long ago was that the total bandwidth capacity of a telco pop? seven, eight years ago. How long ago was that the, the total bandwidth capacity of a telco? 15 years ago. Right. That's 
fucking amazing. Yeah, that, that, that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, the, the general rule of thumb we used to have is that if I could get, you know, 10x the bandwidth at 4x the price, you know, it, it was it was kind of that no-brainer that I would definitely, that was right. when you saw the inflection, because it always took so long for us to get the adoption right. of, you know, I mean, 10 gig was ratified back in 2002. Right. And we're, you know, still, you know, not at 50% adoption on the server rate. The, the, the core, the backbones are all doing well. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, there's discussion 100 gig and beyond now, but boy, on, on, on the server side, everybody's talking about 25 gig. It's not that sexy. Uh, but, you know, the, these transitions are tough. Uh, yeah. You know, we run into some of the limitations of the, the economics and, and what's right, happening. Right, but there. what's happening is with, you know, kind of forums and foundations like OCP, some of the stuff we're doing at Cumulus, and other people that are kind of in that mix and ecosystem, is they're starting to remove cost as a barrier to capacity kind of across the board, right? You can get a phenomenally operational network, great hardware technology, and, and still like continue to run your business, right? And hire people to actually operate the gear. Yeah, um, so one of the discussions we've had at this show is that you know, networking becoming part of the discussion helps to kind of get it out of its silo. Um, right. And I think you know, one of the cool things about Cumulus is, I mean, you guys are Linux, you know, so, you know it's, it's with the way I operate it, you know, if I understand Linux, I can you know, manage all your devices. Um, do you see networking kind of coming out of the bowels and be, you know, be, be just part of a general you know, you know, infrastructure? You know, where, where do you see that dynamic of you know, networking yeah. and general IT? So, that's a great question. That you're 100% aligned with, A, what we see happening and why we've taken the path we have. You know, I've been in networking for a really long time. We could have written our own proprietary networking stuff that's really cool. You know, like an, maybe it's an HP Open Switch, maybe it's a you know Arista EOS, but we recognize that Linux is going to be the foundation of data center going forward. Storage, compute, networking, all of those pieces, and being able to leverage them in concert is super important. We have a bunch of customers that use um, some overlay technology that we built. It's kind of a super. We call it lightweight network virtualization. Think of it as kind of like you know baby step Nicira. Um, and they use it on the switches and the servers because they're all Linux, they use standard Linux technology, they're putting it on storage boxes now. It's a way of them building a reasonably cool network that's you know, way ahead of what is generally available, all using Linux building blocks. Really, really cool. Um, kind of interestingly enough, our VP of engineering it, it either has done a talk or is doing a talk, it's called Linux Networking is Awesome here at OCP. He's doing something really, really cool. He's got a Broadcom-based switch and a Mellanox-based switch in a, in a network together. That's not the cool part. They're running MLAG. Wow. So if you look at like classical vendors, yeah. um, you know, basically they all rely on kind of internal header stuff and MLAG is only compatible between like this product line of right, this right. vendor and, and not compatible across the multi-vendor and all that. Because we've based our MLAG off, all off the of Linux constructs, it works. Mellanox and Broadcom together. Not yeah. same vendor, not same silicon, not same anything, yeah. just Linux. No, that, that, that's pretty cool, because you know, for, for, we always talk about interoperability, that's uh, but interoperability. when it comes down <laughs> to it, um, yeah, you, you need to do something different, because you know, customers always ask for it, but it's usually not that simple. Right. Uh, so, so we have to, you know, to, to make something simple is really hard. Right, exactly, <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. That's why we're really proud. Right? So, Jared, I want to shift gears a little bit, because yeah, yeah. we always hear networking is the lag between compute and store. Okay. In, 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 in kind of the, the rapid growth of the cloud. What, in your experience with customers, is the, is the network catching up to the demand or are they getting this new capacity that you said, they just went through the steps of this massive capacity increase? Is that getting ahead of their demand and are they starting to come up with new applications, new solutions to take advantage of that? What's, what's kind of leading which? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, I think you're, you're starting to see this, this age where um, the, like at 10 gig to the server, you were kind of barely starting to catch up to what the servers you know, were, were able to support a couple years ago, right? So you're like one gig to the server or maybe a couple, you know, one gigs to the server, that was dead at almost, you know, 15, almost 10 years ago. Like when I was at, at Google long ago, one gig to the server was, was you know, squashed, right? It was way over provisioned, or sorry, right. over, over committed, over subscribed. So getting to 10 gig kind of helps you out. And now all of a sudden with this advent of the 25 and 100 gig technologies, you're starting to open it up and people are envisioning operational environments that are way different than what they did before. Um, we're seeing customers doing this crazy stuff where they're 
doing container deployments, they're running routing protocols on the host, and the way they do mobility is the container has a static IP, tree, IP address, it just pops up, gets advertised in the network, storage shows up everywhere, there's no concept of placement of anything, and you have these massive data centers that are running that way, all because they have a phenomenal amount of interconnect capacity. That's right. awesome. So, JR, you know, can't let you go without asking, you know, what, what's kind of you know, catching your eye these days? What kind of things, as you, as you look out, uh, do you th think people will be talking about throughout 2016 uh, that, that you know, maybe they aren't today? Right, you know, it's going to sound slightly lame, but I think you're, it's going to end up being true in that um, IP storage and what are the right solutions, the scalable, tangible, high-performance IP storage solutions, that's going to be, end up being right, the big discussion. People are, are recognizing that it's possible and it's viable, and they're starting to run up against some of the bottlenecks of it. You know, like Ceph, let's pick on that, right? Great technology, got some limitations, we have a lot of customers using it. A Bunch of them are like tweaking it, like they're writing their own patches to it to, make, to come up with issues, or to overcome issues rather. And you're going to start seeing people continue to beat up against that until IP storage becomes the foundation of what people do. And I think that's going to happen over the course of the next year. You're laughing, do you agree or disagree? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, JR, you and I have history working on, on, on these technologies. You know, I, I feel like we've you know, beat our heads on that wall for a while. Um, my, my take, I mean, there, there's certain applications that just you know, are, are you know, they're using Ethernet. I mean, every, everything's using Ethernet. When I do SaaS, I talk to most service providers, it's going that way. Um, you know, hyper-converged infrastructure, you know, is, is not a SAN environment, so, um, yeah, no, I, you know, I, I think that that movement is happening, but, um, you know, if, if, I think if you're talking about, like, fiber channel, um, as, you know, versus IP, uh, I, I feel like that discussion happened two years ago. And, yeah, it's uh, not so much fiber, fiber many, channel versus IP, it's really just about... Just helping storage, you know, networking solve some of the storage problems is what or, you're saying. Or how it systemically solve the storage problems, right? Yeah. When you look at a technology like Ceph, you know, it's like in the, in the old days, like when we used to do this stuff, right, someone would assume I'm going to have an IP storage target yeah. and I'm going to have a host that's going to talk with that target. But with something like Ceph, you have the local caching layer that's super sophisticated, right, that enables IP storage to be pragmatic. And I think that's what you're going to start seeing is given an IP network, a super high capacity IP network, how does storage live in that world where it's redundant, scalable, movable? Yeah, and, and some of your partners, uh, you know, definitely we've been talking to about uh, you know, technologies right. that are doing this. It's, it's definitely, uh, yeah, good, good opportunity. Networking and storage have had tons of issues, and especially if they can work together to fix right. them. Uh, exactly. That'll be goodness for the industry. I think it's going to be fun. <laughs> All right, well, we have to leave it at that, JR. As always, uh, good to see you. I'm sure we'll see you here again next year. Absolutely, All sounds right. good. Thanks a lot, guys, appreciate JR it. JR Rivers from Cumulus Networks. I'm Jeff Frick with Stu Miniman. We are live at San Jose, California at the Open Compute Project Summit 2016. Uh, again, big shout out to Pika8 and uh, Micron and Mellanox for sponsoring us to be here without their support and the support of our other sponsors. We couldn't take the Cube to all these events, over 80 last year, and bring you the insight that you're looking for. So again, thanks to them. We'll be back after the short break with our next guest. Thanks for watching.